field. We are getting set for a really exciting game. We have Titan in white who will be pulling. They are from Quebec. They are the overall seven seed. And in dark we have Toro. I believe they are the overall two seed um, looking for a win in this quarterfinal matchup. So my name is Allison Fisher. I'm here with Bobby Anderson and we are very excited to bring you this game this afternoon. Wind's starting to pick up a little bit, which I think everyone on this turf is pretty excited about. Gives us a little bit of a cool off, but also makes the throws a bit more challenging. And we're ready with the opening pull. Here we go. The pull is done by Florence Zian, who is the Team Canada player who is also playing on C10 at this point. Great grab and a huge flick huck up with a D by number 10 on Titan. I believe that is Rose. And there does look to be a foul called. Toro player felt like she had, there was some contact on the challenge there. Observer listening to both sides. Looks like they are going to go to the observer. Ruling is a foul. The disc has to be tapped in, and then Toro will take it on the line. Number 30 looking to assist on the goal. And quite an easy assist to number 10, Doris Zhang. Great start. Yeah, I was talking to the Toro coaches before the game, and they've had a bit of an interesting road to this quarterfinal. They've won two games and lost two, so she was saying that the players are definitely hungry. They feel like the other games that they lost should have been a little closer and they should have came up with those wins. So definitely hunting to get into that semifinal. Yeah, and 10 on the, on the other side, they're from Quebec, which I have people listening in will know that um, that's also where I'm from. So I do know these players a little bit more and most of them have been playing for between one and two years. The program just started last year. They got a, an extra extra invite to come to CUCs last year and had a uh, great showing for our first year team. And uh, the program is is growing in Montreal now. We actually have two junior women's teams. So they are just coming here looking to see what they can learn, what they can take away from this game, to do their best on the field at all times and never stop fighting. You have to be pretty happy with your second year as a program and you end up in the quarterfinal playing against Toro. Yeah, I think they're just trying to look to take anything they can learn from this game. All right, so we're going to have Vine with, oh, usually it's Vine with the disc. Yep, Vine is going to pick up the disc here. She tends to operate as the main handler for Titan. Looking for Nina and a nice swing pass over to Marie Casanova. That's Gab Chartrand on the far sideline with the Frisbee, looking for a possible dump option. Lot throwing under pressure. Great grab by Flo. Oh, and it looks like there's a call. Yeah, Toro defense really putting a lot of pressure on those handlers, making those resets a bit more challenging. And as you did mention, the wind does seem to be picking up. So that it's possible that the less experienced uh, Titan throwers may struggle a bit more in this wind. Looks like the Toro player thought that it was a stall out. So it's a contested stall, as we can see by our lovely observers indicating that to us, Nathan Magnus and Justin Lee. So Gab will have the disc on the sideline and she had two seconds to throw it and was able to get it off. Vinay with the frisbee, looking for an option. Uh, excellent layout D block by number 28 on Toro. Yeah, Toro playing a bit of a junky zone there and they're able to force the turnover. Nice pass up to number seven on the open side. Looking for the swing back to 28. Across the field, little bobble, but double zero manages to reel it in. Gap on the mark. Nice swing into the middle. Titan doing a good job of shutting down the uh, downfield options. Double zero gets the disc again after a, a nice cut. 
looking up field, throw to space. Great D by Nina. One of the things the Toro coaches was mentioning is that their D has been unbelievable and they've been getting tons of stops, but they just haven't been able to capitalize on those. Yeah, well, there you can see they just managed to uh, tip that disc away. We'll have 88 pick it up again. Looking for 28. Looks like no one on, on Titan has picked her up. Uh, and there is Mode looking to go get her. That's Mo de Hua on the mark. Pass to the end zone. A little bit too far for number 88, Risa Lee Chan. That was a good run, just a little bit too far. So we'll have Vinay picking up the disc. She'll walk it to the front of the end zone. And it looks like possibly Toro is setting up their zone again. Yeah, it's really doing a great job of putting pressure on those. Oh, excellent handlers. swing throw all the way to Florence. To Gab. Oh, and D block by number four. That is Tayama Lyle. So, pretty short field for the Toro D line to work with here. We'll see if they're able to capitalize on this turnover. Looking for that IO flick. And wide open swing pass to number four. Cut from the back of the stack. Let's score. Classic end zone scoring. Well, great job by the Toro D line, really forcing that turnover. They had a short field to work with, and they were able to capitalize. And that was one of the things that their coach said they've really been struggling with. So it's great to see them clean that up. Yep. So now Titan has to go back, start on offense again, and try to maintain possession of the disc so that they will able to be get on the board. I was talking to the coach, Alex, earlier, and he was mentioning how he's just really proud that, that they've gotten so far that they've managed to already be in the top eight. It's a huge accomplishment. And uh, he's uh, graduating eight players um, after this tournament. They'll be, they'll be going on to, let's say, bigger things after this. Um, so he just is really focusing on making sure that, you know, they're, they're really enjoying their time here. They're having a, an awesome uh, experience playing so that, you know, they'll continue to want to keep playing into the future. Yeah, it's very impressive that they're in their first or second year in playing and they're already in this quarterfinal. Hopefully it'll get them hooked on the sport and they're able to take everything that they learn from this weekend into their adult playing careers. And here we are with the pull. Lines uh, about a three quarters of the way down the field. And Vinay with the disc in the middle. And nice pass through the zone. And Florence Dion puts up a big hack, which Toro is able to bring down. Number 10 on the far sideline. Lots of time to throw, no mark. That was a great look through the middle of the cup, just maybe getting a little bit antsy, pretty excited to see an open receiver and just a little bit of a misfire there. Looks like number seven with the disc. Catherine Quach in the middle of the field. Nice high release backhand. Maybe caught the wind a little bit too much. Trying to hit number 28 and turnover. It will be Nina Edouard picking up the frisbee. On the far sideline. Looks like Toro has gone to person D. With Laurence Dion as the initiating cutter. And Maudroy is able to get it on the sideline. Looking to get it off. Handlers very close. Looking for a swing pass, cross field. Great dig by Nina. Pull that disc up. And she puts up an IO flick, which is brought down <laughs> by number eight. Great grab. Number eight is Anne Denomi. I believe she's a new player this year. And pass to Mode. Number 42, Mode Roy with the goal. And Titan is on the board. That was great vision to see that open cutter across the field. A little bit worried that it hung, was going to hang up too much to get the to give the Toro defender some time, but great grab by the receiver to go up at the highest point and bring that disc down. So the player who just caught the disc, she uh, she is one of uh, quite a few of these Titan players who had the opportunity to play for Team Quebec. The team name is Era, and they just uh, competed at 
youth club championships in the, the States, right alongside the US Open. And I believe that they ended up in a three-way tie uh, in their pool. And so were knocked out of the top eight because of that, but they ended up finishing ninth on, uh, I believe, three easy wins. So they have a lot of experience that they uh, were able to take away from that. And uh, they really enjoyed playing together. And actually, Mo De Hua was one of the main uh, threats on that team. Well, that's great to see that she can bring that to a team with a little bit of inexperience and use that experience to help the other players also grow. So the coaches of Titan say that they mostly prefer person defense. I think it's also a question of uh, experience. Their players just maybe don't have enough experience yet to have uh, the ability to throw a whole bunch of different defensive looks. Uh, but they do have a zone in their pocket that they may pull out during the game. Let's see if that happens. All right, we have number 10 on Tora with the disc. Number 18 coming back to get it. Swing across once again to number 10. Number 20, that's Haley Smith with the Frisbee on the sideline. Back to the middle, far sideline to number 18, Morrow. Now, and we do see Titan putting out some type of a cup, making it hard for the, giving the challenge to the Toro players, having to put up a big floaty pass all the way to number two, Tracy Dow. And you can hear on the sideline the call to go to person D. Titan is bringing in, everyone is now caught up. Nice pass up to number 13. That's Montana Dennis looking for the end zone. And a nice defensive block by number 24, Isabel Lupena. Yeah, Toro was looking very confident that whole way up. Their coach actually said they've only been broken maybe a few times in the tournament so far. So great pressure by the Titan defender. And not a terrible look, Deepak forcing the other team to have to possibly work it all the way back up and turnover again. So we have T10 with a relatively short field here. We maybe have about a third of the way to go to get into the red zone. Will they be successful? Great grab on the sideline, but number 36. Nice pass to the middle, continuing the motion of the disc. Looking for an option. Finds an open receiver, but it looks like there has been a pick. Very common to happen in the end zone as the teams transition into a stack and try and get themselves organized. And that's Chora with the disc. She is, as her coach describes, the firecracker of the team. Oh, nice little D block there by number 16, Jaden Lunn. And number two takes off long, Tracy Dow. Will she be able to pull it in? Oh, oh fantastic grab. grab. And now Toro has his chance to score. Oh, number 26 <laughs> with the D. Number 26 also has a twin who unfortunately has a concussion and will not be playing in this game. And that's number 11 with this. That's Florence Dion's sister, who she just started playing this year. So for sure, this is her first big tournament. Looks like there's another pick that has been called. Well, this whole, you mentioned the one smaller girl is the firecracker of the team, but the whole Titan team really seems like they're coming into this game with a lot of energy and they want to be here and they know that they're going to have to do that if they want to contend with this Toro team. And uh, Titan takes a timeout. Probably a smart move at this point. This point has been going on for uh, a little while now and maybe those girls out on the hot and windy pitch are looking for some water. Yes, the, the little firecracker. <laughs> uh, she is a super spirited player, always pumping up her team. She, uh, she really takes
takes that job seriously and does a fantastic job at it. Now this D-line is really making the Toro O-line work. They've gotten a couple turnovers on them now and they're in a situation where they could potentially take a break off them. Well, they do have the wind to their advantage if we are judging by the flags. <laughs> vertical stack. Defense now has 20 seconds to set. Offense is not allowed to move. Looks like they're putting on a four person cap. Could be a challenging position to get out of. Oh, great job, way to get the disc moving. Once again, that's our firecracker number 36. And opting for the hammer. Well, Good that's one way of there. getting it out. <laughs> she didn't really have a lot of options and it's better to take the field position if you're at a high stall count. I agree. 16 has to run down that dump and she cuts back across the field. Good grab, and there appears to be a pickup. Everybody's going to retake position. Lots of stoppages this point so far. Neither team really being able to get their offense flowing. Lots of picks, and there's been some timeouts too. We'll see if Toro can clean things up here. Yeah, they have a, they have a challenging job going upwind. Let's see what's going to happen. Oh, great trying to recover that disc bid by number 18. That was Moro Santacono again. So great decision by Titan to kind of huck that downfield. They forced the early turnover and now they have pretty good field position here. Oof. But I believe that is... Adam who just got hand blocked on the sideline. I'll have to go back and play some more defense. Oh, well, that's a nice cut up line and a big throw. Just a little bit too much angle on that throw and the wind just pushing it out of bounds. Yep, so we will have Adam picking it up again. Great throw, nice IO. Oh, and a big hack. Little bit maybe of a misread. Maybe a little bit of lack of experience showing up there. And it seems, seems that Titan could have had a bit on that play. But turnover again, and they're back on offense. Adam picking up the disc again. Looking for a swing option. Goes, break again, same throw, so beautiful. And another block. So we're kind of seeing the same struggles happen over and over here. They start with a break throw and then they get hand blocked and then Toro picks it up and there's just a little bit too much edge going into that wind. So we'll see what Toro can do with this. Looks, Looks like, like they're gonna take out. a timeout. I think that's a wise decision at this point. There's really a lot of back and forth. Everyone is Maybe struggling a little bit at this point. It's also the pressure of playing on the showcase field. Even even if you don't really pay attention to the fact that your game is being live streamed, it can be in the back of your mind, possibly distracting you. Yeah, I think even if you try and forget about it, it's still there. And it's pretty easy to forget that lots of these players are under 20 years old, um, just based on the level of ultimate that they've been playing all weekend. So they, although some of them are experienced and have been showcased before, it's still, it's a big tournament and it's exciting. They want their friends to watch. They want to do well while they're on the live stream. So 
I think this is a wise move. This was a long point and it's really hot out there. So just getting some water and taking a little breather can be all that you need on these longer ones. to set up a zone, possibly forcing Toro to make a tougher throw than they were expecting. And she's able to get it out of the cup, goes right back to the sideline. Oh, that was a good try, throwing it an IO flick through the cup. Unfortunately, just a little bit too far for her intended receiver. And Titan gets the disc two yards outside the end zone line. She's just going to pop it in. I would say relatively easy pass. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like there was a little bit of a miscommunication with the Toro defense there. And Titan's able to get a break. And that brings us to a score of two to two. Seems like we've been playing for much longer than that. That was quite a long point. That was quite a long point. Well, it looks like possibly this is going to be a, a game of who's able to score downwind. Yeah, know? the wind is really pick starting to pick up now. That's going to affect a lot of throws. So Toro's going to want to regroup here. They do have the wind on this one. We'll see what they can do with it. I know Coach Carla, she's going to come out with some very smart zone-like look. Coach Carla has a ton of experience. She's coached Team Canada numerous times. She coaches Toro and she also coaches the Sixers who play in the senior women's division. She is one of the more experienced coaches in this country. And one of the best. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that she has won Coach of the Year two years running. Wow. definitely someone you want leading a bunch of very uh, high-spirited <laughs> teenage girls. Someone with experience that knows what they're doing. When the pull is up, I believe there is an offside called. So as we've seen in numerous games on the live stream, each team is basically allowed one pull that is offside and then there start to be penalties applied. again with the pull. This is a player who last year just started playing and I believe she was the leading scorer at CUC's last year. It's quite an accomplishment in your first year of playing Ultimate Frisbee. So Titan coming out with a zone look. Does not seem like it is phasing Toro at this stage. Very nicely dumping and swinging it back and forth across the field. Shot through the middle, nice dish to the sideline, and another pass to number 28, 28, very involved in the play. A little bit maybe of a miss throw to number 88, uh, Risa Li Chen, but she was able to reel it in for the score. Yeah, Toro really showing there why they are in this position, why they are the number two seed. Pretty easy hold. The zone isn't really phasing them. They were patient, they moved it up the field, and then got the easy score. Yeah, and that's the type of offense you want to see from a, a top-level team. Easy, you know, it doesn't matter what the other team is playing on defense, you're able to work it through and score within a minimal number of passes. Yeah, that's another thing we've kind of been discussing on the live stream here, that we're on day two, this is game two, it's very hot, the fatigue's starting to set in, so closing out teams can become very important as you go through the tournament, because you really do want to win as, as few points as you can. Um, trying to avoid that cramping, like it's 
I don't know if all of you have played on turf before, but it makes it a big difference with the heat. So they, uh, that's definitely the offense they want to keep going with. And when ha here we have the basically standard offensive line from T10. I've watched them a couple times so far this tournament, and you generally see the same players out on the O. We have Vinay, who is the main handler on this O-line, controlling the play, telling her players what she wants, making the smart throws, Just getting high in the stall count here, ups for a hammer, which Flo is not able to pull down, number 17 on Toro is able to bring it down, and now it is Toro with a relatively short field looking to see if they're able to get it in the red zone. High stall count throw, great grab by number five, Tiffany Zhang. Continues to number four. Oh, and a pick is called the play. That was a great grab. Well, number five actually, the coach informed me, is 14 years old, and she just started playing this year. So just a sensational uh, player to come out of the junior division, and she just started and is 14, so has four more years of this division to play in. That's phenomenal to be on this, this type of team at such a young age, get such a wonderful experience playing you know, in your first quarterfinal and being an impact player. Swing over to double zero, looking up field, looking for her option in the end zone. Doesn't want to rush things, takes a nice dump pass, gets it right back. Classic cut from the back, looked off. Number four <laughs> runs it down, down, pulls it in. And and that was a nice nice try by Nina Edwoff, poach off her player and go try to get that deep. She was just a little bit too far away. Yeah, that was great pressure. That was just a sensational grab. Yeah, uh, I, I think that the youngest player on T10 is actually that player, number 88, Nina, who tried to get the D. Uh, she's the youngest player, but she's also the most experienced. She's been playing for quite a long time. I believe she's been playing for about five or six years. Um, pretty amazing to be 15 and having played since you, know, you were nine or 10 years old. Yeah, and to be 15 and to be the most experienced person on the team. It's pretty phenomenal. Well, Toro's defense definitely doing what they want. They came down in that four person cup Tita not really finding a way to deal with it yet, and they were able to capitalize. Yeah, I, I think that also the the fact that Tita does not have a lot of teams to play against of their caliber. There is now a second team in Montreal, um, and there is a team out of Quebec City at this stage in the game. So we do have three women's junior teams in, within the province of Quebec, but uh, the level is not equivalent. So I think that Tita really struggles with having an opportunity to play against a team that you know will throw this type of zone on them so they get some practice. That was a nice looking pull. Unfortunately, just a little bit too wide. And Titan will get to take it, I guess, just slightly in front of the brick mark, about a third of the way up the field. Looks like Toro setting up in their four-man wall again. A little bit of confusion. Toro is trying to tell Titan to take it on the uh, brick mark, but the disc actually did not quite make it to the brick mark before it went out of bounds. Yeah, that is a very aggressive four-person cup. Good, good idea there by Rose to try to throw behind it. Unfortunately, it looked like uh, just Justine uh, Zion was just not in the right place to be able to catch that disc. Nice upfield pass. Wide open on the open side. Once again, pick a skull. Ah, that would also explain why number 28 is so wide open. <laughs> <laughs> There's usually some reason why someone is that wide open. <laughs> All right, Stella's coming in at one. Handler cuts up the line. Nice pass, but excellent D by number 24 into 10. Just stuck her arm out there, was able to tip it. And looking deep off the first look. 
Nice fake by number 17. Looking for an open option. And she puts it long to number eight. Oh, and it looks like there's a call. But Rose is able to catch it, which is great. Unfortunately, there is a call on the throw. Question is, a stall. it is a stall. The observer is indicating that there is possibly a stall down. We will see if the T10 thrower will contest. So there are now currently two calls on the field. There's an injury and also a stall down. The stall down will be dealt with first and injury if it's 10 and Toro want to sub players, they will be allowed. So we do see a sub in this situation. We have Florence Dion coming on on the field and a Toro player, unfortunately I can't see her number at this current point, is also replacing the injured Toro player. So it looks like they're still discussing the stall down here. All right, so it looks like it's going to be coming in on stalling eight, contested stall. Not a lot of options that we can see right now. Oh, what a great try by number 36 on Satan. And Toro is going back the other way. They have the advantage. They're going with the wind. The wind is at their back. Although Titan is playing some great defense. Oh, nice bit. Titan is playing great defense, making their, all their uh, under looks pretty tough. Yeah, that was awesome downfield defense. They really didn't give them any options other than to put it up. Well, Adam looks like she's trying to make a pass to Flo. Unfortunately, it went right into the hands of a Toro player. And Toro is maybe... Uh, quarter of the way out of the end zone. Oh, great pressure. Great defensive pressure. That was a that was a good look by number four on Toro to looking to throw to her open side player. Good defensive pressure by 10, cause a turnover. And there we have a, another call. Looks like a pick. This will go back to Chor and Laurence Dion will reset with her defender in the stack. Cut from the back, not really open. Once again, Florence manages to get wide and she just cranks one up to Rose Daou, who then throws to Anne Delomé and back to Rose for the goal. Observer that was a beautiful rules it point. In. That was a gorgeous throw. Huge hack by Flo. I know she's been working on those throws quite a bit in the off season, uh, and clearly it's been paying off. score is now 4-3. Uh, we just managed to update it properly. Looks like we missed a score earlier. 4-3 um, for Toro. Satan is going to be coming down with her defensive look. You can see that Florence Zion is back on the line for the pull. Let's see what these uh, girls can do on this defensive line. Well, I think this is, they're in exactly the position that they wanted to be in this game. They're really putting a lot of pressure on Toro's downfield cutters and getting those turnovers. And then just a great throw upfield to get that break. So we'll see if Chitan sticks with their person defense or if they're gonna throw on a zone here. Toro is going into the wind, so a little bit challenging. They struggled with it the last couple points. Oh, that was almost a brilliant pull. Just at the last second, floated slightly out of bounds, and Toro will get it center field. Titan clearly is putting on a zone look right now. It looks like a classic 3-3-1, with Florence Dion way in the deep space, taking away any deep potential looks. 
by Toro. Toro working it nicely here. Swing it over to the break side. Just what you want to be doing. Making the cup move. Number 16 playing the center handler. Making a cut upfield. Getting the disc. Keeping the disc moving between number 10, number 20, and number 16. Working it well. Right through the middle. Excellent job. Keeping the disc alive. This is what you want to be doing on zone offense. Keeping it moving, making it tough for the cup to catch up to you. Not holding on to this too long. Nice and patient. Great pass to number two, Tracy Dow. Oh, what a great visionary throw, cross field. Number 20 has it, puts it up. That was a great throw by Haley Smith. Just looked like it veered out of bounds at the last second. That was a great possession by Toro. They were really patient. Oh! oh. Almost a, I would uh, almost argue that was a Callahan. Uh, great defensive play, grabs the disc. And once again, we have Jaden Lunn passing to, was that Doris Zhang? Great play for yeah. the score. Nice heads up play there. Looked like she was in for the Callahan, but observer ruling her not in. Nice to have them there to be sure. And that's a hold for Toro. That was an excellent zone possession. They, they did have that last turnover when they, they took a deep shot, but uh, the rest of the play, dump swing, dump swing, moving the cup, was uh, very textbook how you want to be playing zono. And great work by their cutters as well. Once the handlers did get it through that middle, they had a lot of great continuation cuts. Nice deep look and didn't work out the first time, but then they got it back and got the point. All right, so we're gonna see Titan come out on offense here. Going up wind, a little bit of a challenge, but we've seen them score up wind already once this game, so I'm sure they will be able to do it again. They'll likely be facing the wall of Toro again. <laughs> the wall of Toro. I'm sure Coach Carla is gonna love that. <laughs> We go with the pull from double zero. Once again, going out of bounds. Seems like every pull we've seen from that end zone tends to fade away towards the, uh, the far side of the field on the last uh, maybe 20 yards. And as you called it, <laughs> looks like four man cup where the cup is playing a little bit flat, challenging on the even that dump cut into the cup and Nina puts up a big throw Toro comes down with it it's number four passes to number 28 great throw to space easy catch oh. <laughs> and tackle <laughs> for the goal definitely not on purpose just losing her footing a little bit and that brings Toro to a three point lead. The score is now 6 3. So, Titan, looks like they're taking a timeout here. They haven't really found an answer for this zone that Toro's throwing at them. As you said, they don't have tons of um, opportunities to practice that. So, even when you are practicing as a team, it's not the same as being in an actual game. So, looks like their coach just wants to talk it over because I'm sure they'll be seeing zone for the rest of the game until they can kind of figure it out here yeah and I think if you're uh, if you're Alex in this situation you know you're just talking to your players about not holding the disc too long right you saw how how easy it was for Toro to move the disc up the field when they didn't hold it very long right the possession was maybe two or three stalls before it was out of the hands of whichever thrower had the disc at the time I think that would be something similar that Alex is probably looking at to telling his players right now, you know, let's not hold it, let's move it, let's keep being active. Um, another thing he might want to think about is possibly pulling a fourth handler back. Having three handlers back against a four-person cup is pretty challenging, um, especially when the overheads are not necessarily your best shot because of the wind. Yeah, um, they did have a crash last point, but if you only have that one extra handler there, even if you do crash against a four-person cup, they have an extra person to take away your crash. So 
I think that would be a wise choice too, just bringing someone back so there's more support, especially when you're going into the wind as they were on that last point. The over-the-top shots are not exactly what you want. Unless you're Toro. <laughs> that's what they are trying to force with that wall. Exactly, that's, the, that's what the defense wants to do. Make lots of passes, take risky throws. Hopefully the wind will help them out and cause a turnover or two. It's a little bit of a mix-up on this line going out on offense. We have the stalwart TC player, Florence Dion. Uh, she has been playing both ways. We have the Vinay, your main handler. Gab Chaffran, our little firecracker, number 36. Mode, Ina, looking good. These are, I would say, they're more experienced players. What better time to use your more experienced players than when you're down six, three. Although, if you look at the scoreboard across, it says six, four. Ah, and yeah. they've corrected the, it. The wind is trying to help them out on the scoreboard as well. <laughs> so it will be Vinay kicking off the disc. Swings it over to a gap. Oh, nice bid by Nina, trying to recover it. Unfortunately, it was just a little bit too far. And Titan's on deep. Toro looks to be striking up the open side. Nice swing over to 88. Raisa Lee Chan. Oh, and another pick is called. I do find that the Toro stack is very deep, especially if it's their cutters coming from the back of the stack who are, are going to be offering those uh, cuts. And definitely going in this direction as well. They are going into the wind, so that's a pretty far throw to get it to a cutter that's coming from the back of the stack. Oh, nice put upfield and great read by Flo to pull it down. Upfield throw to Gab Chartrain, who continues it to Mode Roy. Nice pass to Vinay, but I believe a pick has been called. Unclear at this current moment which player was involved in the pick. I believe maybe Vinay is one of the players who is involved in this pick situation. The observers are consulting, deciding what they saw, if it was the same idea, where the disc should go, should it go back, should it remain with Vinay. And it will stay with Vinay, and the stall is coming in at one. Good spirit too by the Toro player there. She knew there was a pick and she wanted to be able to catch up, but she also knew that she wouldn't have been able to get that D, so she gets to regain her yards, but the disc stayed with Vinay. Yeah, that was a that was a beautiful throw, maybe a little bit low for Florence Dion. I do know she, ha she has a pretty damaged shoulder, so it's possible that she just didn't feel like she was able to lay out there, whereas I have seen her make some pretty incredible layouts. Oh, possibly a missed throw, but a nice read to bring it down by a Toro player. Once again, number 88, that's Li Chen. Dishes it back, looking for an upfield cut. Has an option on the break side. Wow, nice ups by number five, Zhang, to be able to get up to get that disc. It was really getting taken by the wind there. All the way across the field to number 26 and number 10. Toro working it really well using the full width of the field. Looks like there's an injury call on the field. I think that 36 on Stan is calling a foul, if I'm not mistaken. She got maybe tripped up while she was chasing on defense. The question will be, when did the foul occur? Did it affect the play? Did double zero stop because of the call. Looks like 
It is a turnover. Nina will maintain possession of the disc, and she's just going to put it long. Great throw, great vision. Puts it out into space to mode. Is able to grab it. And Hua with the goal. Great play by Titan. Well, Titan's really starting to show that they're not afraid to huck it, and their smoothest points that they've had have come from those opportunities. Yeah, that was great vision, especially by our little firecracker to just <laughs> take off deep right away. As soon as that, that disc was put in, she was gone, and it didn't look like any Toro defender was able to uh, pick her up in time. And then a great throw from her as well into the end zone. She didn't wait for the Toro defender to catch up. She just put it out in front for her player to run onto it. Very exciting play. So that brings us to 6-4 for Toro. They're still in the lead, but Titan is not out of the game. I believe that we will be seeing another <coughs> Toro wall. Is that, is that what we're calling it now? <laughs> Toro wall coming down. Hopefully any adjustments that the coaches, because I believe there are three with Titan, coaches have made will help Titan be able to work through that zone a little more effectively this time. So we'll see if... Uh Titan is sticking with their zone as well. The Toro handlers have looked pretty confident going against that. The standard three-person cup doesn't really phase them too much, so we'll see if they're going to switch that up and try person, and, or if they'll stick with it and try and just put some more pressure on them. Looks like they're going person D. We have number 18 here uh, with the disc on the near sideline. Great swing pass to number 10. Number 16 on the far side with the disc. And the dump cut comes from the stack. Not dissimilarly from the way that Sixers runs their <laughs> stack. Also, I suppose that is not surprising. Oh, great IO flick looking for number 18, Moro Santacono. Unfortunately, it was just a little bit out of her reach, but that was great vision. Yeah, great look there. And the wind's starting to affect throws a little more. Might have pushed that one down a little bit there. Just a bit too low, but really great look. And it looks like maybe it's not the zone that we have seen thus far. Looks like a 2-3-2 two, two, or possibly oh, another nice kind of look junk. through the middle. Great pass through the middle. Lots of time. Oh. Sometimes that just happens. Bobbles right off, right off your tips of your fingers. Swing to number 10. She does seem to be their main handler. Back to number 20. And looks like that pass was just a bit too far. I'm not sure who th she thought was going to be going for that disc. It's the right idea. There just happened to be no receiver in that space. It looks like she was trying to force it a little bit. Be wise to maybe just off that swing, take a second, look for your receiver. She definitely has some great ideas on all those throws, just needs to take a little bit of a breather for her execution. I agree. We have Titan here on the sideline. Oh, nice try. That's a really tough try to catch and keep your feet in at the same time. So it will be, once again, Toro on offense. Right now, Jaden Lun is wide open as the dump. Once again, we're going to be hitting Doris Zhang. And continue it on to the fourth side. Number 18 here on the close sideline looking. Break pass. Oh, great pass. Maybe just a little bit too high for number 16 to be able to pull it in. Jaden Lun, but that was a great effort. So we once again, we will see Titan starting on the sideline, trying to get something going. Going into the wind. <laughs> going into the wind. They are quite far. So number six, Adam just jacked something into space, probably at a high stall count. Toro brings it down, works it over. To the sideline over here. 
Number 20 looking for looking at her options. That's Haley Smith with the disc. Decides to dish it back. Still looking up field. Nice handler cut to space. Oh, just tips off the hands of number 16, Jane Lunn. And Titan sends it long. Oh, tough read on that angle of a throw. And immediately Charles just gonna pick it up and chuck it. Oh, nice read. <laughs> and nice <laughs> jump by the observer to avoid <laughs> tackling the Frisbee. Justin Lee trying to get involved in the game over there. He was telling me earlier that uh, Team Observers never loses. I guess that's what he was referring <laughs> to. <laughs> oh, great throw, IO flick, and a nice swing plast. Titan really able to move it when it is person defense. Oh, nice grab. Great grab. Possibly debatable tie, but tie always goes to the offense. Swing over to the near side here. This is Florence Dion's sister. Once again, her first year on the team. Able to get it off. And big throw, but clearly not the right angle. This goes OB. Spectator also getting involved in this play. <laughs> We're just including everyone at this point. It has been a long point. <laughs> say possibly maybe about seven or eight minutes now we've been uh, on the same point good D by Titan at this point to challenge the Toro offenders on their cuts big throw into the space oh great read manages to bring it down despite some traffic in the end zone <laughs> but clearly unintentional that she just got tripped up at the end there. Great grab, good throw. Toro finishes the point strong. Well, Titan was doing a lot of great things on that point. They were really trying to use the break side and work it up and unfortunately just got into a high stall count situation and had to huck it. But if they keep doing that, I think they'll be able to at least hang with this Toro team. I agree and now they have the advantage. The wind's at their back. They're going downwind on offense. Possibly this will be a shorter point than the last one. <laughs> <laughs> we have had quite a few long points so far. The wind is picking up a little bit and both teams showing that they do like to huck it, but those throws just a little more challenging with the wind picking up. And there's it's a big game on the line. There's nerves, it's hot, it's day two. They've done a lot of running around, so just taking a little bit of a breather before they put those hucks up will definitely help them with their execution. Yeah, and, uh, they do get about five minutes for halftime, so you know they can always get out there on the field, practice a little bit, what angle they want to be throwing those hucks at, get a few reps in before they get back on. I know it's hot, but sometimes it's worth just getting one or two in so you feel more comfortable going into the second half. Titan centers the disc. We do see that Toro zone, great pass, upfield, able to keep it moving, which is excellent. All yeah. the way, all the way, and now just outside the end zone on the sideline. Toro has gone to person D, and Vine is ma manages to get it to, I can't see her number. Is it flow? It is flow for the goal. That was very nice working the zone. They didn't even, they didn't look across the field at all. They just took the space on the open side that they had, walked it up, walked it up, score. Yeah, they looked much more confident and comfortable going in this direction. A couple great grabs by their team to save possession and then just an easy shot into the end zone. It's nice to have one of those uh, quick and easy points after a long point. Yeah. It usually means that same line is gonna stay on the field though. Yeah. players are back on the line. So we'll see what Titan does on D here. I would say they should probably stay in their person defense. They've been getting some turnovers that way and the Toro handlers look pretty comfortable going up against a zone, especially in this direction with the wind. 
I think they have a better opportunity in matchups that way. I agree. I think Toro will look to. Uh, I think Toro will look to to throw it long at the first opportunity uh, in this situation. I mean, if they score, they are taking it to half. Right? They'll be a half eight five. I think they'd be pretty excited about that. And a roller pull, which fortunately turns the opposite way, stopping the roll. And you are right, Titan is playing person D. And Miss Q on the first throw, Titan has an opportunity to go get a break. Nice swing to the close side of the field here. Vinay with the disc, looking for Florence. Unfortunately, tips off her hands. That disc seemed to pop up a little bit in the wind. And... Oh. <laughs> that was a, as we suspected, huge punt off a turnover by Toro. Possibly a little bit of a late bid by the intended receiver. And she looks like possible injury. It was a nice try. And something that we've talked about earlier, but we haven't seen in any of the, well, I haven't personally seen any of the open games yet, but in the women's games, all the junior players take a knee when someone is injured on both sides, both teams. And, and we were discussing how we really love this this move. It's yeah. a great spirit move. This is, uh, this is our chance to make this spread to the adult divisions. That's <laughs> We're right. talking about it now, everyone that's listening out there. We're making this happen. Um, it is happening in the open division as well. I saw a player get shaken up and they all immediately take a knee and it's just a nice respectful thing to do, I think. It means, I don't know, I like it. It seems very spirited. I want it to spread. <laughs> and, it, and it just turns out that uh, the team that I coach is uh, facing off against uh, Bobby's team in the, the first round <laughs> game on uh, Thursday morning in the senior. So we're going to institute this. If uh, anybody else would like to join us in the senior division, you are welcome. Here we go, Titan with the disc. Looks off Gab. She does not seem too happy about it. I'm sure she's just going <laughs> to cut again. Here she goes, cutting again. Gets it this time. Oh, and Mode is, makes a nice strike up line. Wide open. Unfortunately, doesn't get the disc. Back to Vinay. Oh, just a little bit behind Nina on that throw. Tough try to catch it. Good effort. However, it is giving Toro a relatively short field to score. Ten defense right now has really got to grind if they want to be able to cause a turnover. Great cut by number 28. Gets the disc right on the end zone line. Looking for an option. Gets a swing pass. Oh, Huge layup nice grab nice. by number two, Tracy Dow. That was a great dig out of the ground. And she's looking for an option. Swing pass. Number seven. Still right on the line. That was not quite in. Oh, looks like a hand block, uncontested. Thank you, Flo, for indicating what was that was. Uncontested foul, stall is at zero. Nice cut, throw into space. Oh, oh no. Slight misread by number 28. That was a tough, tough, tough possible grab. It just started floated up at the last second there. She wasn't sure whether she should jump or turn around and go chase it. Unfortunately, yeah, the, hit the ground. The wind kind of popped it up right by her and then pushed it right back down again, not really giving her an opportunity. Here we have a split stack look from Titan. Great throw, nice catch by Gab. Unfortunately, turnover again. Here we go, Titan running really aggressively to go play some good defense. Wide open pass to number 28. She's looking for an option. Doesn't seem to have much right now. Titan D is really playing tight. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that was not the intended receiver, but 
Successful, it worked out. successful goal. Nice heads up play by the Toro receiver there. Right, that looks like it was uh, number seven, Catherine Quash maybe. Uh, great job to be heads up and catch that for the goal and to take half. So that was a surprisingly exciting first half that we yeah. had there. Um, and it looks like Titan will be coming out on offense out of the half. So if they are able to score and then possibly get a break after that, they're still going to be pretty tight in this game. We're looking forward to it. There's about five minutes now. We are going to take a five minute break. Um, everybody at home, as Brett likes to say, go and get something to drink, <laughs> have something to eat, stretch, get some popcorn. <laughs> be ready to come back and join us in five minutes. And we are back for the second half of this game. The score is currently 8-5 for Toro. And there are, if we are to judge by the time that we are keeping, uh, there's approximately uh, 20 minutes left in this game. So we will have in white, Toro, Toro sorry, in white is Titan. Uh, they will be receiving, Toro is in black, they will be pulling to start the second half. You want to just do a quick recap in case anybody's just joining us, what's been happening in the first half of the game? 
Well, uh, Titan's doing a pretty good job of holding on to Toro here. They started out with a zone. It is a bit windy, but they made a great adjustment kind of midway through the first half to switch to person D, and that's been challenging Toro a bit more. They, the Toro handlers were pretty comfortable handling their zone. Um, on the other hand, uh, the wall of Toro is really <laughs> challenging Titan, as we're calling it now. They've been playing a lot of four-person cup against Titan. Uh, they're starting to figure it out a little bit more. We saw a couple points where they had some great movement through the middle and um, Titan also getting a little bit more comfortable using their hucks and uh, they're doing a great job so far and they're really sticking with this Toro team. Oh, a little bit of contact oh, I there. Think that's, I think that's a little bit of contact, yeah. And actually we are we are not seeing the wall of Toro at this current moment in time. Uh, it does look like they're playing um, what is commonly referred to in Toronto as a version of FSU. Um, it is a junk zone that we will not <coughs> say the entire name <laughs> out loud. Um, and uh, I don't think Tizana has seen too much of this type of zone either. As we were discussing in the first half, they don't have a lot of experience on their team. Um, most of their players have been playing for one, maximum two years. Um, so they don't have a lot of opportunity to play tournaments where they would see these types of defensive looks. Great D by 88 to pull it down, but Titan gets it right back. That's Vine with the disc, looking for an upfield option. She hits Chor, great give and go pass, and puts it up. 88 once again, pulling it down. She is a great deep defender. We've seen her make a lot of nice plays in the deep space so far this game. Here we have number four cutting up line. Great oh, grab. Nice pressure. Great grab. Excellent defensive pressure by Florence Zion. Uh, but Toro able to come out with it. And high pressure on the mark. Also good defense upfield. Cause turnover. So we will have Titan going back on offense. Looking to finish what they started. Unfortunately, turnover again. This time it's number 28. Oh, <laughs> little foot block there. <laughs> little kick to the ground disc. Turnover once again. And it's interesting, this is sort of how we saw the end of the second half going with a lot of punting turnovers. Um, and I guess we're starting the, the second half the same way. Florence, uh, as we've talked about earlier in the game as well, she will be playing on Team Canada, um, the junior under 20s that are competing in Waterloo, I believe starting on the weekend. Um, just an incredible experience for a, a player that's only been playing for about a year and a half. Yeah, it's amazing the experience that they can get that young. It's really gonna transfer into their adult career. And turnover right on the line. Can Stan tip it in here? Oh, great pass, little IO flick there. Two, once again, Florence Dion for the score. So that brings us to 8-6 and a hold for Titan. Now they've got to come out on defense, look to mix it up maybe stick with their person D or some sort of other option to uh, challenge the Toro handlers who, as we've said up until now, have been pretty comfortable with these standard zone looks. Yeah, they're going to want to bring a lot of intensity on this D line. If they can manage to get this break, then they are within one, which is a pretty amazing feat considering this is lots of their team's first nationals and they're going against the number two seed in the quarterfinal and to be within one point with we're at about 15 minutes left in the game. Uh, we heard them doing their cheer at halftime and one of their team slogans is no regrets. So they're really gonna bring that kind of attitude to their D-line. Yeah, I think you just lay it out on the line, right? Just leave it all on the field, give it 110% every time you're out there and who knows what's gonna happen. The wind really starting to pick up a little more. Toro will have the wind on this point. So we can probably anticipate some kind of huck as we know that's what how they like to play. That is what they like to look for. And the pull lands 
just out of bounds. So Toro will get it at midfield, about halfway up. Looks like they're running a split stack to the open side. Huge layout grab by number 18. That was a fantastic grab by Santo Cono. Oh, just a little bit too far, possibly out the back on that. It was a great look though. And Titan will have an opportunity to possibly break this point if they're able to walk it all the way up. They do have a long way to zone. go into the wind, but they have scored some upwind points so far. So if you do it once, you can do it again. <laughs> Yep, it looks like they're running a split stack. And it is Justine Zihon with the disc looking for Nina. Great grab. Swings it upfield. Nice movement. Good idea. S maybe could use some work on that execution by number 13. Tough throw into the wind. Toro is, has the whole field to go. Oh, what a gorgeous outside in flick. Great grab. Number 30. Oh, unfortunately, just a little bit out of the reach of the intended receiver. Number 13. Montana, is it Denny, I believe? I've written down here. Denny. Well, Monica Wang's definitely going to want that one back. You can see a little bit of frustration from her after that one. The wind just pushing that down as she had a wide open receiver. But there she is. She gets it back. <laughs> uh, sometimes that's all it takes, right? You, you make a, a mistake and you go get it back. Good luck again. Similar throw that we saw from uh, further up the field. Unfortunately, a little bit too far. Maybe slightly too much angle. The wind just took it a little bit more than the thrower was intending. And Titan will once again go up on offense and they have called a timeout. Maybe they would like to regroup and discuss what strategy they're going to use to go up on them. I think they realize the importance of this point. They are running out of time. Uh, there's about 12 minutes left if we're correct on our game clock. We've Which been has not always <laughs> been the case. <laughs> Hasn't really been the case today, but we think we got it figured out now. So yeah, it's a good idea just to regroup. They have a long way to go upwind. This has also been an extremely long point, lots of back and forth. So great idea just to take a little bit of a chill. Yeah, and I think uh, given the heat and everything else, it, it's really important that the, the players do, as you can see on the field, drink as much as possible as soon as they have any opportunity to do so. Yeah, we heard in the last game, one of the coaches, it was about halfway through, and he's like, okay, from here on out, double the water, double the food. <laughs> yeah, well, I think also when it's so hot, it's, I know from experience playing, and I'm sure you do too, that it's, it's tough sometimes to remember, like, I need to eat and drink, I need to continue, because the heat is so oppressive that you just don't feel hungry, and you think, oh, I, I don't feel thirsty, so I don't want to be necessarily drinking all the time. Yeah. But it's really important. It's hard enough to remember to eat just in a regular frisbee tournament, but when it's hot like this too, it's extra important, but also extra easy to forget. And it looks like the infamous Wall of Toro is <laughs> coming out again, which is a smart move defensively. This is what you want. You know that Titan struggles with it more than they do with that person matchup, so why not play it? Titan looking to, oh, that definitely is going to be a strip. Titan looking to uh, crash the cup with the handlers. Um, and then I believe that the one of the defenders in the cup possibly got a hand on the disc. And the discussion will be, was it before or after Nina had possession of that disc? And it looked like they just had a little giggle about the fact that probably Nina was speaking to the observer in French and the observer asked for clarification. <laughs> <laughs> Foul contest. What I can see the observer saying. Well, the observer 
observers are going to consult to discuss whether they believe that Nina was actually fouled or as in should there be a contest or is it uncontested foul the observer ruling is that it was a foul the observer is ru ruling that it was not a foul so Nina is able to maintain possession of the disc on her own end zone line Nice pass. Good vision to throw upfield. Get the disc away from where you want it to, where you don't want it to be near your own end zone. And now Stan is going to have to play some tough defense here. Pick called. Yeah, we've seen a lot of that from Titan, which uh, is nice to see that they have that confidence in their defense, and they have caused a lot of Toro turnovers close to the end line. So I think it's a good move to get yourself out of that position. And there will there is an injury on the field. It will be uh, Justine Dion taking a sub, and replacing her will be her sister. <laughs> and Tor Toro is also subbing a player. I cannot see her number at this current moment. Uh, it looks like number thirteen is coming off. So it will be Jaden Lunn with the disc in the middle of the field. No, it will not be. <laughs> <laughs> I am totally kidding. Um, I believe that is number 20, Haley Smith, on the far side with the disc. And the stall is coming in at four. And she just puts it long. Possibly catchable, but it was really close to that back line. Hard for far for intended receivers to be able to read that as it coming blady over your head. That's Tough a very angle. hard read to as it's coming over your head and then also somehow trying to lay out with that angle. So not surprising they were unable to come down with it. And here we are once again with Nina Edouard in the middle, Adam on the side. Looking to get it to her. Tough pass. She just puts up a scuba. Not a bad option on a high stall count. Just get it out of there. Great pass. That is number 16, Jaden Lund. Two, number 18, Moro Santacono for the score. And that brings the score to 9 6 for Toro. Yeah, that was a great look. Looked like there might be a little bit too much angle on it, but luckily her receiver was speedy enough to get under that disc and haul it in. Yeah, and you kind of you really like those throws to space where the receiver does have some sort of view as to where that disc is possibly going to be ending up. It's much tougher when the disc is coming over your head or at a really sh sharp angle that makes it tough to be able to read. So as we've been discussing, if we are correct with the time, it is running out for Titan at this point in the game. Um, the score is 9-6, so they're down by quite a few breaks. It would be a, it would be a tough but not impossible job to come back from this point. Yeah, they did a great job that last point of causing some turnovers, but unfortunately it's just they were being forced into the wind and with that wall of Toro. It's <laughs> they were in a pretty tough position to be able to get that break, but they're back on O now and they do have a little bit of time, so we'll see if they can have a nice smooth offensive point. Yeah, and we have seen them been able to uh, very easily move the disc uh, up the field into the end zone, so it's, it's completely within the realm of their capabilities to be able to do it. And we have another different look. This uh, In Quebec we tend to call this uh, more of a slough where you have the uh, the mark taking the play player with the disc and then the two off offset defensive uh, handlers sloughing off into the lane. Um, I'm not sure if that's what they call it in Ontario, but it's a similar and familiar looking jug set. And they did succeed in causing a turnover, so it is Toro, number 26, on the line here. Cynthia Deng looks like 
she possibly had a little bit of a travel there to initiate her play. Nice swing to the open side to number 88, Lee Chen. Looking, looking for an option, cut from the back of the stack. Once again, number four seems to always be open when she makes her cuts. 88, cut up the line. Nice poach there by Vinay to block the continuation pass upfield. Wide open, number five. That's Tiffany Zhang looking for a, a shot into the end zone. Does she have it? She does, number 88, just outside the end zone line. Looking for something. Is she gonna dump it? She does. Looking for that swing option. And there is a swing option, but she's a little bit deep, possibly 28, wasn't able to see her. Back to 88, in the middle of the field, about 10 yards out. Looking for an open side pass. You can see she's pointing for it. Um, back to 28, They're doing a little bit of just giving and going here on the handler set. Get to number 17 on the s right on the end zone. Looking for an option, 28 cuts across. Throw to space, just a little too far. That was great pressure by Titan on that end zone line. Toro had to definitely swing it a couple times. They had a couple of near points, but just not quite in the end zone. So Titan will get another chance to hold. Yeah, it looks like they're setting up in a horizontal-ish set. Possibly a nice swing over to Florence. She just puts it long to Mode. Great, Great grab. grab. And Mode throws long. Oh, oh. nice try. Looking for NNE. Unfortunately, it was just a little bit on the wrong side of her. She had to turn around and wasn't able to quite grab that disc. That was a great idea, though. But on the other hand, Toro is all the way deep, close to their own end zone, and are going to have to work it all the way up. 28 with the disc. Looking for an upfield option. Ops for the swing. Over to number four. Looks like those cutters are getting a little bit tired. <laughs> it's a long game. Swing over to number 26. And again, oh, oh great recovery. <laughs> nice save. Looking for, yeah, points and calls for her, her swing to the middle of the field there. That was great. Now she's behind the disc. Oh, <laughs> another great grab. Way to lay out to catch it. Very impressive play. Nice IO flick. Good vision on that. Looking for the continuation cut. Number 17. Oh, just a tiny bit too far for number four, Lyle. Like we have an injury call. And it looks like she's calling an injury. I would possibly say brought about by fatigue. I think that'd be a pretty good bet at this point. She also kind of tripped up a little bit when she was going for that catch. Could be potentially an ankle. Hopefully nothing too serious. Yeah, she looks like she's able to walk it off, so it's possibly a cramp. And each team is allowed one sub on an injury. So as you can see, 21 is coming in as a replacement for Toro. And I believe 26 came in um, as a replacement on Titan. Definitely nice to have some fresh legs on a point like this. And as we suspected, there is the horn. So Titan does manage to score, bringing the score to 9-7. However, I believe that will be the final score and the end of the game as the horn goes. And in hard cap, if the game is not tied, when the point is scored after the horn goes, the game is over. 
So what does that mean? That means that Toro will be moving on to the semifinals and Titan will now be battling to be fifth. That is probably the best they can do at this point, Yeah. which would be a big accomplishment. They came in seventh uh, ranked at this tournament, which uh, they would, I'm sure, love to hold seed, if not better their seed, and they are still able to do that, even though they unfortunately did not win this game today. They definitely have to be happy with how they played. I mean, finishing 9-7 in a quarterfinal at Nationals is pretty great for the second year of a program. So, And they saw a lot of promise with all of their players. They definitely have a lot of room for development, but Toro and their great defense and uh, pretty smooth offense was just a little bit too much for them today. So we'll be seeing Toro in the semifinals tomorrow. Yeah, and we hope that you will all be joining us. I believe we are doing at least two, if not three, live streams tomorrow. And we're excited to uh, to continue this work that we've been doing. It's great, and we appreciate all audience commentary and feedback. Please do not hesitate to let us know how we're doing. This is Alison Fisher with Bobby Anderson. Thank you very much. We will hear and see you tomorrow.